The internet is data country, a roaring mix of knowledge, entertainment and opinions, where everyone can be heard and anyone can find what they're looking for. On the timeline of human existence, our time with the World Wide Web is near statistically insignificant. As a result, no one knows what lies in store as our connected minds grow closer. Nonetheless, the internet has had a colossal impact on our global way of life. The birth of the internet revolutionised commerce, changed how we socialise, and it gave us online gaming, an industry that now dwarfs both the music and film industries combined. But before gamer tags, tweets, and online trends came the idea of .com, and with it, a series of catalysts that led us to the online world we live in today. Let's go back. In the 1946 short science fiction story, A Logic Named Joe, was an imagined world where every house had a personal computer. In the story, these devices called logics are an access point to a network of information for the home user. But when something goes wrong with Joe, the network becomes compromised, infecting the other devices in the neighborhood. People find themselves getting answers to questions that shouldn't be answered and accessing content they aren't supposed to. Thus, we have what's considered the first documented idea of a computerized network, touching on viruses, network security, and the social impact of computers in the home. What happened between then and flash mobs started in the minds of computer scientists Vincent Cerf and Bob Kahn, who are credited with laying the foundations for the internet. But it wasn't until 1991 when programmer Tim Berners-Lee created the web we know today one supported with hyperlinks, allowing us to browse from one document or website to another in a single click. The internet in Australia started back in the late 80s, uh, and it was started by the Australian Academic Research Network. So this was a network that connected universities primarily uh, through to other universities in North America. Beyond that, service providers started providing dial-up uh, internet access to consumers. And so dial-up was where you plugged a, a modem into your telephone uh, line and you typically got 30, 40, 50 kilobits per second uh, in speed, which is about a thousand times slower than, than what we see in the internet today in Australia. Uh, fixed internet um, was heavily reliant on the infrastructure that was already in the ground or in the overhead cabling uh, in the streets. And then it's sort of leading up to the birth of, of NBN in around about 2009. The World Wide Web is, at its core, all about data, the collection and transference of information, coordinated at massive scale so that people can access and share information and click on heads. For premises in the NBN footprint, NBN provides the access technologies that help to connect them to the NBN network. Whereas your phone and internet service providers are responsible for everything else, from plans to the speed and capacity you enjoy when you access an international website or play online. It's the symbiosis of the NBN network and service providers that bring your connection to the world. So what is NBN's role in providing internet services to Australians? Well, NBN provides one piece of the puzzle for a customer's connection through to the internet. NBN provides connectivity from a point of interconnect through down to the home. Service providers then provide the connectivity uh, from that point of interconnect through to the internet, and that might be to content servers or other capabilities or even global networks uh, beyond, beyond Australia. How low your ping time is, is determined by how far away that game server is. For game servers in Australia, because they're close, you're going to have a lower ping time or less latency. Game servers in Southeast Asia or even as far as Europe or the US, the ping times are going to increase and the experience isn't going to be as good. When we're playing online, information travels at very fast speeds between the player and the game server in a form known as packets. These near weightless blocks of game information are made up of data, like the IP addresses from where the packet came from and where it's going, 
and information about how it relates and connects with other data packets. The journey begins when you click on your game launcher or fire up an online compatible game on console. At that point, you immediately begin to send data over your local home network. From there, the data moves to your router and forward onto the NBN network. After that, the data travels at very fast speeds, including over fiber optic cable to reach a point of interconnect, which are usually housed at a telephone exchange. From there, your internet provider does the rest, connecting you to the right game server, be it here in Australia or overseas. All of this should happen in a near instant. It's how the actions we take in-game are seen and felt by you and the other players. We now have entire generations who've never known life without the internet. To some, it's a tool for knowledge. For others, it's a way to connect and play with friends, hone our skills, and experience new worlds in-game. Some even see it as an extension of our own minds, a highway of extended cognition that allows us to harness new ways of thinking and even join minds as an early form of true cognitive link. One thing is for sure, there's more data online than any of us have time to explore in one lifetime. What we do with that time is up to us.